Hi guys, welcome to Life, Love and Gardening. Hope you guys are doing well. I've been doing okay. Just in the garden is uh, cooling down today. The sun is starting to set and I just want to kind of come outside and show you guys some of the things that have been going on in my garden. All right, as you can see that big plant right there, that is a hibiscus and that's one of the things I'm super happy about. So I'm gonna walk over there and show you guys a little bit about what's going on with that. Okay, so one of the things that I'm really happy about, I know earlier I was talking to you guys about the flowers here. And the flowers uh, would get only about, let me see, not even this big. If you can see that, they would be small, like the one that my thumb is touching there. They would be small. Matter of fact, here they go. Okay, so if you can see those, they would be about that small. And they wouldn't even be as a deep purple or red color that it is. And they would fall off. And they just kept doing that all spring long, all summer long in our heat. And I showed you guys the the base of these. I'll get down here so you can guys can see. Now you see how big this is? This is bigger than my thumb. And the one back here is the biggest one, I think. This one is also pretty big so the flowers have actually started to get a pretty good size here and so I'm so glad that I am going to have I hope some hibiscus flowers um, if not I will probably just take you know the roselles off the little flowers here off while they're closed and I will just kind of preserve them as much as I can but hopefully I will get some flowers and I did notice that some of them are kind of yellow like this and some are red like this so I'm thinking that this is the male and this is the female flower but I was just so happy to come out and see them all over each one of these stems here there are um, flowers coming on all over each one of these you can see and then also we were looking at previously I talked to you about a lot of my tomato plants that were dying um, and that I just needed to kind of pull up like this is this is the goddess of the moon and it did good but it's a, a determinate variety so once it started to get really hot it just kind of died so no parts of it um, stayed alive and I did say I was going to do some garden cleanup so I guess I'm doing it in the middle of talking to you guys and so this is a mullen right here and this is a yarrow and the, all the yarrow died back when it got really hot as you can see this is like a little twig left from earlier in the season but I left it I didn't pull it up um, and uh, here it is as it's cooling back down the flowers are starting to come back on again and it's you know greening back up it was looking really frail and <laughs> brittle like this most of it looked like this and maybe had three or four of these little leaves on it but everything else was just kind of dying another thing my collards now this is a different um, collard right here than these over here and the bugs apparently like this collard green variety over here better than this one and so I think I planted out Morse heading champion and I'm not sure if I did vates as well um, but I do know that this one is the champion right here I'm not sure what this one is and this also had some um, I think mortgage lifters and Paul Robeson and they've pretty much died out so I do see a little bit of green right here on this one and this was the goddess of the moon so if I had left it it probably would come out I maybe can try to snip this and root it and just kind of like bring it in the house and try to save it until the next season okay so while I'm over here let me tell you some more about the other plants over here I have a pepper over here and this is the 
Red Knight. And it's putting on flowers. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually get any fruit off of these. But that's Red Knight. And this is a... Um, what is this? This is a Neapolitan, I believe. And it's filled with flowers. Filled with flowers. Maybe I should turn on my light. Here we go. This is another collard. And it's getting eaten as well. So... I'm going to get back to the tomatoes, but while I'm over here, um, my kale was looking really good for a long time. Um, all of it was looking like this. Now I'm seeing a little bit of bug damage here. That's okay. That sweet potato that I was supposed to take out about two months ago, um, I did take some out and I put it in the kiddie pool and it didn't do very well over there because it was just um, planted in, um, I think, just topsoil and compost uh, i didn't have anything else but i want to get the slips planted and it didn't really survive if it did then i would have been happy um but it's a lesson that i learned this is my fig that came up it completely died all the way back you can see down there it died and i thought that i wasn't going to have any fig any fig trees but i i just kept watering the empty bag and eventually this fig sprouted up so um, but in with the sweet potato is the peach and the reason why I said that I was going to take the sweet potato out so that it doesn't completely kill my fig tree. This was the mystery plant right here that I planted. I wasn't sure what it was. Um, I found it out in my yard and I was like, oh, I think that is a plant and it turned out to be, um, what is this? Amaranth amaranth that's what it turned out to be and for a while the aphids was you know they were really eating it up and they kind of subsided a little bit but you know here's all the damage to it and it mostly just did this one stock it didn't really mess with the other stocks my mulberry back here is still growing good a lemon this is a lion's mane onion and it died all the way out and I just left it and kept watering it anyhow and I saw some little green start sprouting up this is a grape it's not looking the best this is Carlos Scuppernog grape this is a basil here I can't quite remember what this basil is but it, this is a fig another one that I thought died if you can see how big it was here and I thought it died and I kept watering it and here it is one popped up so sometimes when you think something is dead just you know just leave it be sometimes and sometimes it might surprise you blueberry that's not looking so good another grape right over here this is a um pineapple pear that's looking okay and then pomegranate and this is that kitty poo failure that i was telling you about some blueberry plants back here these two Okay, so I'm going to go over here to um, my asparagus, Mary Washington. And this was that um, super sweet, I think 1,000 or something like that. And it was like completely almost dead. It looked about as bad as, it looked like this right here. Most of it was dead. Um... um and I just left it alone. And now it's back to looking like one of the best plants in my garden. If you can tell, it's sprawled all the way out over here. It's all over here on this pepper, which is, I think, an ash pimento. You can't even see it. But this is an ash pimento, I believe. And so it's all the way over here. It's taken up about three of my containers. It's, you know, it's indeterminate. So you can see there are a bunch of little flowers all over it and so i just let it go and it is going <laughs> this is stew pie so stew pizza and this is a potato leaf tomato fruit tastes really good and this is my big big mullen plant here like as the temperature started to cool down it really really grew big like it was just only as big as these right here and just over the past month or so and we got some rain 
which we haven't had in about two or three months. We finally got some rain and it just kind of took off. It's like big. It's taken up this whole pot and the pot is only as big as this right here, which is about three, three gallons. And so I may need to move this tomato plant out of here, but the tomato plant is doing just fine. I may take a couple of my tomato plants inside um, for the winter and see if I can kind of overwinter them. This is an another tomato that was doing really, really bad, um, but now it has lots of flowers on it. This is the the um, uh, orange, what is it? Golden super sh sugar sweet. I don't, I'll get back to you on this one. <laughs> I'll get back to you on this one. Sun gold, I believe it's sun gold. I believe that's sun gold. And my tomato, plant that has been my favorite the entire growing season is this poor Dorothy. it still has tomatoes coming on in here um i was dealing with a little bit of blossom end rot but i've seemed to have corrected it a little bit um, we'll see i gave it a little bit of calcium and a little bit of um like garden tone plant fertilizer and it seems to be doing okay if the caterpillar will stay off of it but you know see i have plenty of tomato still growing on that one so that is good and then i have the basil back here and this is some more mary washington um asparagus right here and this is morris head and collard that is getting eaten up and a marigold this is thai queen basil which smells really good the bees love it love it love it love it but it is so big it was really really small and it just grew this is a dwarf bubba okra and another dwarf, dwarf bubba okra and i see a little okra pod right here coming in so i'll be getting some okra and like i said since it's been cooling down these pepper plants have been putting on lots of flowers. They're looking bushy and prettier than they've looked the entire season. Oh, I almost forgot about this. I even have a watermelon back here still growing and it, it didn't do anything all summer. Um, I put it in the later half of the summer and this is the yellow doll, the yellow doll watermelon right here um also if you don't pay attention to all my trash in my garden this is the sunchoke jerusalem artichoke and so um i was saying the last time that i didn't see any flowers but i came out here and look at that guys some flowers starting to form here and this has been in here for maybe five months so i know it's time for me to probably pull it up have some this is like my little rehab area right here the lemon and lime bush they're putting back on leaves all of them were kind of bare like this right here all of them were it was just twigs but these has just come out the past two weeks the leaves some mint down there that i'm kind of trying to rehab and some lamb's ears down here and lemon balm geranium I don't think it's geranium what is it like the mosquito plant that's what that is and right here I have purple asparagus it doesn't look like purple right now but that's what this is it's purple asparagus and my banana plants are looking you know not so great and I don't know if you saw this one it's not looking that great either it did put off a couple of different little pups down here if you can see so this is a pup and then this is another little pup right here it's, and maybe about four or five pups but the main stalk is back up in here this thick one right here so it put off a lot of different pups so which means i probably need to put it in different container maybe this right here had some onions that i never got to get to planting and everything looked kind of wilted and rotted down like this and then all of a sudden 
just onions started to sprout up so not all of them died this sun goat i'm gonna put a little snippet in here i came out here the other night and it had all kind of um hornworms on it tomato hornworms or sometimes they call them tobacco hornworms on them and so i'm gonna just slide a little slip it hello guys so i wanted to show you something really quick i went outside um tonight and i found some hornworms on my tomato plants so i don't typically go looking for worms or insects at night but i do have a black light and my dog and i were outside and i saw some on there the previous night it, well as it was getting dark as the sun was setting i just happened to see one and you don't typically just see them because it's if you can see here, they're um, the same color as the leaves um, of your plant. And so these hornworms, they can go from uh, the eggs to a full grown adult pretty fast. So it's about uh, five days, I think, uh, for them to uh, lay eggs and for the big hornworms to turn into like a pupa, like a cocoon, and then about 19 to 23 days before it um, comes out of that cocoon and is a moth. And they are typically, I think they're the hawk moth, a two spot or something like that, hawk moth is what they are. And so I just wanted to kind of quickly show you if you have never seen one, this little one in the front, he's snacking down on this tomato leaf. If You can see it moving back and forth there. And so what you do is for insecticide, you can use um, BT or diatomaceous earth. And of course, these different things will work at different stages, but BT, diatomaceous earth, you can just kind of pluck these off of your tomato plant and drop them in a bucket of soapy water, um, squish them, uh, flush them down your toilet, uh, or leave them for the woodpeckers and other birds that um, like to eat these, but these are called the tomato hornworm or the tobacco horn, um, hornworm. And so they eat vegetables, um, grape leaves, tomato leaves, tobacco. Um, and so you just kind of want to make sure you're tilling around in your dirt, fluffing it up some to get up some of those larvae or some of the hornworms, because I don't really see them. Like I said, I don't see them during the day because it's hard to see them. And so you typically or people typically just go outside at night with a green light. I'm not a green light, a black light to kind of locate them. And so this is this little one that he's chomping down. I don't know if it's going to, let me see if I can kind of, okay. You see those kind of little teeth down here. And so they're not venomous or poisonous. It's kind of like a bluff. And those lines and things are called chevron lines. And so typically they have about eight chevron line lines on them. And that tail is just kind of like a bluff. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So eight little dots or chevron lines also on them. And the, the front is the place without the horn. And you can kind of see the little legs or the little teeth, what they use right here to chow down on your leaves. And so they say you typically only find about one per plant, but my tomato plants are making a comeback and I found all of these on one plant. And so, like I said, I went out about two nights ago and I got about five off of that same plant and um, I didn't see any last night. And then I went back out tonight and I saw these three on that one plant. So could there be more out there on that plant? I possibly, but I wasn't trying to stay out there too long to get eaten up by the mosquitoes. Um, so I just came on in and I want to show you guys these. This is the bigger one here. His tail is smaller. Well, not really. On the camera, looks about the same size, but they look like they're poisonous. They don't bite, they don't sting, none of that. So perfectly okay to handle. Some people raise them. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, let them turn into moths. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to probably flush it down the toilet. See the little teeth right there? That's like his mouth, I think. That's the mouth. 
All right. So I just wanted to come on and let you guys see the horn worm. I want to videotape it for you guys. I just wanted to show you guys if you've never seen a tobacco horn worm or a tomato horn worm. I wanted to kind of show you guys what it looks like, tell you a little bit about it, the different measures you can take to get rid of them. The best one probably being just hand picking them. And what plants they typically are found on. So a quick little educational piece. All right, so guys, that's about it. I just wanted to come out and do a quick little walkthrough of what's going on in my garden. Say hello, because I haven't said hi in a while. So glad to be able to get out here and get a video to you guys and just kind of document what's going on. Because when I'm not talking to you guys, I'm not really documenting it, anything. So it's going to be hard for me to um, remember. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are able to join me um, today in this video. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you guys later. Bye.